Hey folks, Matt Frazier here. Greetings in the name of Jesus. It is so great to be with you, even if it is recorded. My name is Matt Frazier, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of this journey, which is uh, Ophir Crypto and the work at GemEffect. I just first want to say thank you to Pastor Roy and obviously to John Blaylock. An amazing journey this has been. I want to congratulate you on the graduation, um, but I also want to share with you some thoughts that I hope will be an encouragement to you. When John and I first met, I shared with him the the vision that the Lord gave me uh, almost 10 years ago. The Lord told me that he wanted me to unlock global generosity by giving, and he had showed me uh, the feeding of the 5,000 the parable that is in John 6. And what's amazing about that parable is the fact that there was a boy. And I want you to see yourself as that boy who had the five loaves and two fish. I think it's important to note that the disciples weren't carrying around this food. Andrew had asked, you know, how do we feed all these people? And if you think about the story, all of these people come out to hear Jesus teach and there's a multitude there's at least five thousand men and of course this question of in the natural how do we feed this many people and of course the boy with his five loaves and two fish which likely if you think about it was the family's food and i can't imagine you going outside of the city in the first century and not carrying food and water with you and so presumptively most of the people that were there likely had things with them. And so the challenge is the thought of, did Jesus create matter from no matter, or was there an unlocking of generosity that happened? And so the Lord showed me this when he told me about unlocking global generosity, and it's by giving. The boy gave his five loaves and two fish, which I think represents the family's food. And so often in our culture, we say, this is mine, I've worked for this. But if you think about 5,000 others, and let's say their families with the similar uh, food and water, this idea that Andrew would hand this to Jesus and he would break the bread and would distribute to all that had need, and everyone ate to their fill, and there were 12 basketfuls left over. I certainly don't want to suggest that it wasn't a miracle, but it's a miracle that I believe the Lord has said is still happening today. We see this in the hearts and the minds of the people serving churches in remote areas in the Philippines. We see people who are have very little who are giving a lot. And so it's with that heart and that spirit that I want to greet you today. And I want to encourage you. Ophir Crypto and the concept of the gold of Ophir is very close to my heart. And the time that I met John and spent time talking about what would it look like if we took this endowment contract called Ophir? And we realized that this is a tool of unlocking if the people who hold it understand what it is. And so my background is in the fundraising world. I helped nonprofit organizations. And one of the most consistent functions of nonprofit organizations, at least in the Western world, is the endowment. And the concept of an endowment is that you would make investments and the principal you would not touch, but the interest income or yield that it produces would sustain your operations or your organization. And I think any organization that's out there wants to sustain itself indefinitely and would love to have an endowment that produced enough income for them to operate. We have taken that concept in the Ophir Crypto token contract and we said anyone can endow their future. What's so amazing to me is the power of decentralized finance, especially in a world in which everything is becoming centralized. It's incredible to me, the vision of John Blaylock to give the churches of the Philippines this endowment. This endowment is intended to be a multi-generational blessing to you and to your church. And I wanna explain that, you know, the cryptocurrency world is relatively new and it is very cyclical. 
these cycles go up and down they're very volatile when they're good they're really good and when they're bad they're really bad and the idea of a endowment token is that it would provide that kind of stability and would pr provide interest and value we're sitting at a very interesting crossroads in human history because this is the first time in human history where political power and financial power have been separated. If you think about it, in the past, you would win a war, you would kill people, you'd take their gold, and you would rewrite the rules in your favor. And that is a political power of waging war. This is the first time where technology, through cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, we've had the ability to separate those things where the value that's created resides with the people who produce it. You know, all value is the product of human labor. And if you think about it, it's God's creative ability that he gave us, his image, is the difference between us and the animals is our creative ability. And so it's this idea that you are not a consumer, you are a producer. You are the ones who put in the effort to create the things of value. And we believe that the mechanisms of the blockchain can support you retaining that value and benefiting from it. We can think of no better infrastructure and organization than the local church to give to. And so in an effort and a journey to accomplish the calling that has been made on my life to unlock global generosity by giving, it is so incredible to see John and the team at Ophir giving endowments to churches. But you're probably thinking, we have many needs and where, show me the money. I'm sure that that's a, a common phrase. And I want to encourage you to understand what you have. The value of Ophir right now is, is very, very small. But the future is going digital with money. And there are many things that are happening around the world which are increasing the liquidity and the stability of the marketplace. We're about to come into a whole new season in crypto. And if you look around the world and understand what's happening with Bitcoin and Ethereum and then alternative coins like uh, Ophir, this is an opportunity for churches to be uh, sustained. And we believe that it's a whole new paradigm in philanthropy. This idea that anyone could essentially invest in you. They could invest in the people in the churches um, across the Philippines or across the world who participate uh, of the endowments in churches of Ophir would benefit from that investment. And so we're excited because it's in a strange sort of way taking a, a group of people public and putting on the public market and saying, listen, would you like to invest in the people and the production of the people uh, within the churches within the Philippines? And to me, um, it's a picture of something that is great to come. And so I would recommend that you look at this much um, more than just uh, a meme coin or something that is uh, a flash in the pan. Um, this is an actual asset that over time will gain value. Um, and it's dependent upon the market and the market participants. And so to me, I'm excited that there are 200 plus more churches that are graduating. I'm so thankful that um, folks like Pastor Roy and Gem Effect have come alongside John and been supportive because it is our heart and our desire um, to unlock the value that resides in the hearts of men and women. And to be very transparent with you, I have been a gold miner and a treasure hunter for a long time. I've been very interested in this and the Lord showed me that the gold, all the silver and gold is mine. And that comes from the book of Haggai. Well, what does that really mean? And the Lord showed me that the gold is in the hearts of men and women because all value is the product of human labor. Gold is not and money is not to be worshiped. It's a tool. And so it is our desire to give the tools of infrastructure of the blockchain, to give the endowments, in the places where people have a heart to serve others. You have a leader in John and of course in Pastor Roy and others whose desire is to serve. And to me, if we're going to have an opportunity to create an alternative means by which 
the people of the Philippines are blessed. I believe it's going to happen through this technology that's separated from the centralized players. It should be something that's encouraging to you and empowering to you. Um, we certainly, in our way, are working on ways in which we do actually tie Ophir to physical gold. And that's the efforts that we're doing on our side, and there's more information to come there. But I just want to say a big thank you. I've learned so much in this process, as I know John has, but I'm so thankful because if anything, at this point in time, you know, we're unable to give a great deal of, uh, of money, but we're giving hope in the form of an endowment. And we will be working, especially over the next 12 months, to show you the significant value that is there. The last thing I want to share is an experience I had, and Doc Vince and John introduced me to this. We created a marketplace, and we said, and this is on Telegram, and we said anyone who has a need, who is a part of this Ophir network, and um, you know, come into this marketplace, and if you wanted to, if you had a need that would be helpful to your church, so this is open to pastors, you know, there are, I'm sure, people around the world who'd be interested in um, supporting you and helping you with um, any issues or concerns that you have and would be essentially an over-the-counter means to trade Ophir. Well, an opportunity presented itself and there was a pastor of a, a small church who was being evicted from his property. And this touched my heart significantly. And so I asked, I said, well, what what's needed? And um, he was going to scrape the interest from his uh, from his Ophir endowment from the church, and wanted to um, wanted to sell that to be able to not be kicked out of the facility. Well, I asked, "Well, how much is it?" And I heard a number in pesos, and of course, I didn't know the exchange rate. And come to find out, the amount of U.S. dollars that was needed was twelve dollars and sixty seven cents. And I want you to know that story. I shared that with a number of people that are, that I have friends with. And I said, this is the kind of thing that's happening. Is that how would someone know of the needs of a church that would not exist the next Sunday unless $12.67 of value was, was, was sent? And to me, this is a picture of a whole new model, not only in philanthropy and in giving, but of connecting in community. We have all of the tools. And so you might look at Ophir and this endowment as a new form of currency or a new asset or you know, perhaps something that could help fund something. I want you to see it as something more significant, is that it is actually an excuse to build deeper relationships with people across the world. And I just encourage you, there are so many people around the world that believe in serving others but many times they don't know what the needs are. And so I wanna thank Doc Vince and John for that, that opportunity to serve, but also it's a picture of what I believe is to come. Our desire is that ultimately the sustainability of the churches is something that is a blessing. Why? Because I believe the largest single institution in the world is the local church. You could go anywhere in the world and there may not be a post office or a grocery store, but there is a local church. It's a place of trust. It's a place of safety. And we believe it's the place in which the blessing should come. And what greater thing than people across our world who don't know the name of Jesus, seeing us as a place of safety, but also a place of provision. And we desire for the abundance and prosperity for churches like yours so that we can be a city on a hill. I'm so thankful for you. I want to say welcome and congratulations. And um, it's very exciting to see the Ophir community grow. I wish I could say, you know, the there are green candles and, you know, we're going to the moon. But folks, this is a, a journey that we're all on and I'm just so thankful to do it with you. Um, so I appreciate you inviting me into this. Special thanks to John Blaylock um, Pastor Roy, Gem Effect, and, and honestly, for genuine people whose heart is to serve others coming together uh, to build something that could have a tremendous impact on the world. 
So God bless you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks.